In the last two movies, we talked about headers and redirection. And one of the very important points about working with headers and redirection is that they have to come before any output to the HTML. And I stress that several times. Unless there's one big caveat, which is that we can have output buffering turned on. And that's what we're going to talk about in this movie, is what output buffering is and how it works. Let me give you a metaphor to illustrate. Let's imagine for a moment that our PHP code is a faucet and our web server is a glass. And we're going to fill up that glass with the output of the HTML. So as we execute our PHP code, the output line by line is being sent to the web server. The web server, as soon as it gets the first little drop of water, has the headers established for what it's going to send. That's why we can't change them after we start sending that code or the water to it. And then once the page has completely finished rendering, then the web server will take that information that it has gathered up and send it all off to the browser. So it accumulates in the web server. The web server starts the headers for it, accumulates all the data behind it, and when it's done, ships it out the door. Now let's imagine that instead, we have our PHP code in the web server, but we have PHP's output buffer that's like a measuring cup. And instead of filling the glass directly, we're going to fill up the measuring cup first. So that's what fills up with all of our data. And then when it's full, or when we get to a certain point, a certain measure, we're going to take it and we're going to then send it over to our web server and fill up our web server with it and send it off. That's how output buffering works. While it's still there in that measuring cup, it's still inside PHP. We still have access to it. That's why we're able to modify the headers. We haven't given anything over to the web server yet. We have it still in our buffer, change the headers in the buffer, then it'll go to the web server at the end, and at that point, the headers have all been established by our PHP code. That's what output buffering is. Now, we do pay a small performance penalty by turning on output buffering because we do take the time to do this extra step. We take a little bit of time to tell PHP, put things together before you send them out the door instead of just expressing them right on to the web server. But I think that you'll find in most cases, the performance penalty is not that high and the benefits to gain by having output buffering are pretty significant. There are two ways that we can turn on this output buffer. The first is that we can open up our php.ini file and make the adjustment there. The second is that we can do it on a page by page basis. So first, let's open up our php.ini file. You'll remember that early on in the configuration chapter, we set up in our sandbox something called my underscore php info dot php. And that should bring up all of your PHP info. And if we search that page for buffer, you'll see output buffering. Output buffering for me has no value. That means that it is turned off. That it is not doing output buffering. If it had a size there, then that would be the size of our measuring cup. That's how much it's going to buffer before it sends it. So let's remind ourselves where our php.ini file lives. If we go up here to the top, you'll see that it tells us loaded configuration file is right here at this path. So that's where it's located. Let's open up our command line, and I'm just going to do nano on that file, php.ini. That's going to open it up in the nano text editor. And let's go ahead and do a find for output buffering. Control key and W will allow me to search inside of there. And I'm going to just look for buffer, output buffering. So this shows you the default value is off, development value 4096. That's a pretty good and standard value, that 4096. But this is just code comments. This is not the actual setting of it. Let's just do another search in here, control W, search for buffer again. All right, here's a paragraph all about output buffering. It explains how it works. It's everything that I just told you and a little bit more. And it goes on to then tell you that the possible values are on, off, or an integer. So right now, if we scroll down a little bit more, you'll see that mine is turned off. We did that back in the configuration. We made sure that it was turned off for this reason. Now, I'm going to turn it back on. Now I could simply type on, but instead of having an unlimited output buffer, I'm going to go ahead and give it a limit. That's the idea of the measuring cup here, that it will fill up at some point, but it'll take 4,000 characters before it fills up. So I have 4,000 characters in which to still change my headers before the output buffer is full and it sends it to the web server for the first batch. So now that I have that changed, I can exit using Control X and let's type a Y for save the changes and a return to save them in place. 
Now you'll need to restart your web server, sudo apache ctl restart, what's my password? And there it is, that's my password used to install software. Now it has restarted and my output buffering should be turned on. If we come back over here, we reload this page and let's once again search for buffer. Output buffering is now 4096. Now output buffering is turned on. That means now if you went back and did the previous two movies again with modifying headers and page redirection, you would be able to send white space before you do those redirects and header modifications. Now, in addition to turning it on all the time for all of my pages in the php.ini file, I can also turn it on on a page-by-page -page basis. And I do that by using a PHP function called ob underscore start for output buffer start. And then when I'm done, output buffer end flush. So that's going to start the buffer. Everything that happens after that will go in the buffer. And then at the end, I have to say, okay, I'm done now. You're free to flush this over to the web server. So your page starts with ob start and ends with ob end flush. Very important though, ob start has to come before any content, just the same as the headers. Otherwise, we won't have started the output buffer. We'll output a little bit of HTML, the headers are already sent, then we turn on the buffer, but it's too late. So it has to be the very first thing that we do. Also, it won't hurt to turn it on again if you've already turned it on in the php.ini file. So which one should you use? Should you set in your php.ini file or should you set it in your application? I would say that it's better to set it in the php.ini file so that you don't forget to do this for any page. So if you just have it set there, then it will always be on. However, you need to understand that that means that if you put it on a server where that's not enabled, it's not going to work. You're gonna to have to make sure the php.ini file has the output buffering turned on. And by default, it usually is now. So that shouldn't be a problem. If you're in doubt, if you're creating something that is going to go out to other servers out there and you're not in control of those php.ini files, then I would say use the page-by-page -page version and just make sure that you do it application-wide. Maybe it's something that you always include in your template or something so that it always starts and ends the output buffering before you do anything else. And that way you'll get the maximum amount of compatibility. But for yourself, I think you can just turn it on your php.ini file and be just fine.